Hello, everyone, um, and welcome to the Open Observability Day, a uh, collocated uh, event during KubeCon. Uh, my name is Bartek, and together with Eduardo, we are uh, co-chairs of this event. And in the next 25 minutes, I would like to share with you some important information about logistics, uh, acknowledgements, and some initial context uh, about this event. Um, so yeah, let's, let's start. Uh, so in terms of logistics, um, two simple rules, um, you know, code of conduct applies. Uh, so be, you know, nice and friendly to each other, respectful, because we want to make sure this space is just uh, safe and, and, and harassment free. Uh, masks are required still. We have COVID times, so uh, please make sure you have them on unless you are actively eating or um, talking. For the social media and, and other information, please use this uh, hashtag, Open Observability Day, and, um, and also make sure that, I mean, to understand that the dogs are live and kind of virtual attendees are watching them, um, and they will be kind of uploaded two days at least after the event. There is Wi-Fi as well, um, so feel, feel, feel uh, uh, free to use it um, for virtual discussions and any questions any any you know anything you would like to share with others and maybe not on the scene or during you know networking but just virtually we have a dedicated slack channel or actually it's not dedicated it's dedicated for today for this talk it's generally a slack channel of tag observability i will explain to you what tag observability is later uh, but feel free to really use it and even if you are in person just really help virtual attendees to understand what's happening and just answer the questions or even ask questions right so we will prioritize the questions from the audience here uh, just in person but we will love to kind of take a couple of questions from virtual attendees as well, so we'll be monitoring this channel. Um, and first of all, let's have some acknowledgements. Let's thank everyone who made this even happen. Um, so first of all, program committee. Uh, there were like a bunch of people who were like very hard working on reviewing those talks. There were lots of them. And uh, yeah, thank you. Thank you to them. Um, finally, uh, I mean, not finally, but a second um, thanks to uh, just CNCF staff and venue staff. They, they are doing very, very hard work to make this happen. So thank you so much for all of this. And, you know, sponsors, of course. Without the sponsors, we wouldn't be able to meet here. Um, so thank you for Diamond sponsor, Sponsors, Calyptia and Chronosphere and Platinum uh, Open Source. And we have also uh, thank you to two gold sponsors. Okay, so let's share, let's spend a couple of minutes to really understand where we are, like why we are even here, what we are um, doing here. And by the way, this is my own cat. I really wanted to have my cat being a, mem, a meme, so yes, I finally get opportunity to do so. Um, so what's observability, right? Like, generally we are here for observability, but what it really means? Um, why it's so popular nowadays? So my definition is very clear. You know, it's the ability to understand the current or past states of your application um, or process running on your machines or multiple machines, uh, one or maybe thousands processes, and you know, understanding like what it is actually doing, right? Because we maybe you know program it in some way, but we have to you know make sure it's actually running as we expect it. Um, so the second definition is you know, it's observability is answering unknown unknowns. What it means is that we are shipping this, um, this application somewhere and it's kind of complex environment and we would like to, um, we, we know certain known unknowns, like it can be down, there might be some errors on HTTP and there might be, uh, you know, this memory usage roughly, or we will know what is the memory usage. So those are known unknowns, and we can cover those and un 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 ver um, unveil those using st standard traditional monitoring. Uh, but observability goes even, har even farther, right? Uh, we really want to know the unknown unknowns. So perhaps the questions that we don't know, we will be asking in future. For this, we need really good observability to be able to navigate through the states, through the events that application is, is performing. So we mentioned that observability kind of allows us to infer state of application using certain signals, using external signals. 
And this is where it comes to free observability pillar signal, signal pillars. And, um, you know, traditionally, probably you are aware, we really were talking about metrics, so some aggregate numbers that aggregate certain events, uh, tracing, which is kind of request uh, tra transaction based um, information about, you know, events that happen across different transactions. And, um, and logging, which is literally some kind of like, um, um, you know, simple observability for, for, for scoping the, you know, putting information about the events that were happening in our system. So all of this is great. I think it's already kind of expensive and sometimes difficult to set up all those things. But we are not stopping here. Like recently, we're adding more signals, right? And this is where um, I'm, you know, I'm super fan of Experiment, experimenting in this space. And recently we have grown in profiling and particularly in continuous profiling because as, as our application is sitting there and, and, and performing some work, we want to kind of go past into what profiles were, have been, you know, one hour ago. And this allows us to, for example, uh, find the performance issues you know, that happened one hour ago. For example, you have a memory leak it's too, and your application crashed. It's too late to get the profile now. You want to get the profile just before the memory leak. So this is where continue, continuous profiling shines. And we can, in some way, uh, put it as, a, as another observability signal. But we are not stopping even there, right? Like recently, we have an amazing uh, blog post uh, from Yuri. And uh, that mentioned there are actually six signals, right? Six, yeah, I'm counting it right. So he mentioned profiling on top of like free and uh, basic signals, but also exceptions, but also events. Um, so it's amazing to be open-minded here and just learn about different um, profits of categorizing certain data differently. So observability is easier, but I'm not sure yet if this is like a correct categorization. There has to be balance between, you know, um, clear categorization of certain signals we observe but also like we don't want to have them too many. It's just too complex, right? So I would, um, I would argue with some of this, but it's amazing to have, um, to see people experimenting and innovating in the space to make things easier in the long run. So be mindful, like check this blog post. It's, it's super, super useful. So we, of course, in the CNCF space, we have some projects that helps in this observability mission, right? Um, so let's go roughly through them. We have, you know, as you remember, maybe the CNCF projects are kind of categorized into different maturity levels, sandbox, uh, graduated, or sandbox incubated and graduated. So graduated are those the most major projects. And we have on the left FluentD as the first one, which is, um, I mean, we have maintainers here on this, on this, um, in this room, like we'll be speaking about that for sure. But um, generally it's just a, you know, just collector and pipeline for, uh, for logs and analyzing those. Um, we have Jager, which is, kind of API and a bit of storage and like really patterns for distributed tracing. We have Prometheus, which is like a metric system, but it's much more than this actually. It just gives, you know, monitoring patterns that uh, allow you to alert and monitor in a very reliable way in your infrastructure um, with PromQL and, and so on. Then we have incubated projects. We have um, Cortex and then I will take like the the latter Thanos as well um, as one because they are really solving similar problems. They are essentially databases for distributed metric uh, ingestion and storage. So you can think of it about it like Prometheus, but putting in scalable kind of environments, right? Uh, just, you know, to have like billions of metrics, not only 10 millions, like a single Prometheus can, can handle, right? But it's kind of forming the same family or Prometheus ecosystem that I'm personally in as well. I'm kind of maintainer of Prometheus and Thanos. We have open metrics and open telemetry. Those are kind of similar. So start, let's start with open metrics. Open metric is just a standard or protocol, you could say, for um, ingesting, scraping metrics from your application. It's born from, um, from Prometheus exposition format. Open telemetry is much, much more. It has some standards for metrics, logs, profiles, uh, recently profiles, and then, um, and then traces. Well, I said that, right? Tracings, metrics, logs and profiles. Uh, some of them are maybe still in progress, but generally that's the mission. Uh, but that's not all. They have also SDK. They have also collector um, application that you can just put and, and, and it understand those uh, protocols and can pipeline to your storage or vendor of your choice. 
And we have actually a couple of new projects uh, down there with Sandbox um, level. And they're pretty amazing. It's good to kind of see you know, where, where things are evolving. So Fonio um, is security monitoring agent based on eBPF. Um, Cube Healthy um, is an operator that allows you to just you know, uh, very easily and like in a standard way uh, check your Kubernetes system. Um, so if your nodes are healthy, if your APIs are healthy, and you just run it and it periodically checks and produce some metrics. OpenCost, which is like amazing um, framework and UI to uh, you know just just um, monitor your performance metrics or different features you have enabled on your cluster, and it shows the actual cost of it based on the prov uh, provider you have. So it actually allows you to uh, you know kind of make some cost optimization decisions. Uh, we have Pixie, which is another eBPF agent, but it's also kind of like bigger framework for taking observability and security kind of information from eBPF and kind of put that into, into some database. We have Schooner, which is open source UI for Kubernetes. Um, so if you are bored of kubectl, you can, you can try that. It actually has a monitoring built in, so there are some dashboards, um, so it's pretty sweet. And Trickster, which is like a cache for web services, but it's cached primarily for time series um, applications or databases. So, so you could use it with Grafana to like make your uh, Grafana much faster, uh, by, you know, because it, it caches some stuff. So generally, all of it is open source. All of it is Apache 2. So this is what we are doing in the CNCF. We are trying to kind of maintain those uh, communities and healthy, um, healthy projects a healthy software really, right? However, software is not everything, and as you probably know, like as a, even, even as an engineer, uh, coding is only part of, part of your work. You really have to care about many, many different things to have a successful product, right? Um, you know, you have to have, or like find someone who will do operations of your, pro, of your software, you know, community building, education, you know, just agreeing on APIs and standards, and it's just critical parts. So code is just one thing, right? For this reason, um, we have various tools in, in the CNCF ecosystem. So one of them are those interest groups, special interest groups which are tied to communities, and there are advisory, technical advisory groups tag, um, which are generally for all the projects, not only Kubernetes. So we have two groups for um, monitoring or observability kind of uh, case. First, we have like tied to Kubernetes, seek instrumentation, but it's actually much more like it's essentially how to instrument uh, Kubernetes, but actually how to, how to monitor Kubernetes and observe Kubernetes in, a, in an efficient way. So if you're interested into contributing into the space or maybe ask questions, for example, how do I monitor my Kubernetes? Like that's the space you should, you should go. There are periodic meetings, there are kind of Slack channels, so uh, that's community around exactly that, right? Second group we have, uh, we have TAC Observability, uh, and I'm kind of tech lead there, and you are welcome. We are meeting, you know, biweekly as well, and um, this is more kind of overreaching the Kubernetes because we really try to unify the space of observability and educate others um, on, on higher level. Um, so yeah, you are also welcome to join us, really talk about you know, your user perspective, what you are missing, and what do you don't know, or like, what, you would like, what, what would you like to know? So, so I recommend like, just visiting this space. So if you want to learn more on KubeCon, there are two talks about that. Uh, on Wednesday, we have a TAC observability update, and on Friday, we have um, SIG instrumentation, so if you want to meet those people, like, feel free, I, re I highly recommend. But another kind of, you know, educational piece is, of course, this, um, this event. So let's quickly go through, like, what we have ahead of us. So we'll start with two keynotes. Um, then there will be, like, building observability pipelines. Uh, so something about FluentD. Then they will have break. We'll have then two talks, um, two main talks, then two lighting talks, then lunch, and three lighting talks. Um, two talks around open telemetry, actually, then the coffee break, and finally, three uh, free last talks um, around distributed web assembly or distributed tracing in web assembly. Um, 
op yeah, um, observability introduction again, and yeah, more observability in Kubernetes networking. So it's it looks pretty sweet. So thank you for those who propose talks, um, and and um, it's kind of first first, I think, event open observability day ever. So hopefully, if you like it, if you give feedback that we will. Um, um, kind of, you want us to do those more, like please give that feedback and we'll continue. Okay, as a last kind of piece of this talk, I would like to, we, we have this idea to kind of share awareness of what those projects are doing. Uh, so the project you saw on the landscape, and we will talk about essentially graduated and incubated, so those two first rows, and um, I will have some, some updates from each of those projects um, just might give you awareness like what they do and where they are if you are really using them already. Um, so let's go. So let's start with FluentD and I will ask Eduardo to come and help me with that. Thank you. Well, first of all, thanks for coming to the first uh, Open Observability Day. And just a quick update of the project. Um, FluentD was born many years ago, 10 years, and it's a really stable, we found it, that is working in major cloud providers and in hundreds and hundreds of companies. And as part when we created FluentD, we started the iteration with the new generation of FluentD, which is called FluentBit, which is a sub-project of the FluentD ecosystem. And this week, we are announcing the launch of FluentBit 2.0 that has been a, this journey with Fluentbit started like six years ago, where originally, uh, for who you don't know, it started as a solution for embedded Linux. And then quickly started evolving as a solution for cloud native and distributed systems. And everything that you see today with Fluentbit has been thanks for the feedback from the community and from users, where they started asking for Kubernetes filters, connectors for different cloud providers, or ways to consume data from system D or different type of sources. So, and with Fluentbit 2.0, the first major change and vision in the project, it used to be just for log, log type of data, and now we switch all the project to support multiple type of um, signals. So now we full, fully support logs, metrics, and traces, right? And that means full compatibility with Prometheus, open metrics, and open telemetry. With Fluentbit 2.0 also comes with higher performance. It, initially, the project at the beginning didn't support any threading. It was just a single process used doing asynchronous, uh, asynchronous events, doing asynchronous connection in just one thread. We started evolving with a more performance solution with threads in the output side to send data to destinations. And with Fluentb 2.0, we are extending that to the input side. So now we can scale up uh, even more in your systems. One of the other uh, community ask is like, okay, my agent is working, but how can I see the data that is flowing through the agent before it hits the destination? Right? And why? Because sometimes things go wrong in the network or sometimes the data that arrives to my backend, like a database, Elastic or Amazon S3, doesn't have the format that I was expecting. So how do I troubleshoot and debug that? TAP TAP is a new feature that allows you to talk to Fluentbit over an HTTP REST endpoint and tell it, hey, send me a snapshot of the data that is flowing through this input plugin right now and it will send you a sample for a couple of seconds. So you can inspect live what's going on with the agent. For the other side, we didn't support in the beginning a TLS for the input plugins because we were doing networking, but most of the security side was for the output side of the agent. Now in the input side, if you wanted to use this as a collector, aggregator, you will have all these capabilities. And if you are a developer that is looking to put your business logic into the agent, we, we support this Lua scripting, a couple of filters also to do enrichment, but now we have extended this for Golang, so you can write your own, your own input plugins in Go, your input plugins in WebAssembly, or your filters in WebAssembly. So that is Fluentbit 2.0, uh, so please feel free to grab your t-shirts outside for, for this project, and well, thank you for coming. Thank you very much. Oop, oop, oop. 
All right, let's uh, quickly move to other projects. Um, so I asked kind of community members of, of other projects to like bring, um, give me some slides of updates so it's kind of fresh uh, for you. Some of them are on this conference but still traveling so we couldn't uh, have them in uh, today. But let me kind of go through, roughly through the Jager. So Jager, as a reminder, is a distributed tracing system. And um, you know, it's, it's, it seems like there are lots of updates uh, recently seen since kind of last, last KubeCon. So they have this monitoring tab and I'm using Jager so I'm kind of like a user as well. Um, they have monitoring tab so they have finally some uh, connection with monitoring information, not only tracing, um, so it's pretty sweet. Finally they have OTLP uh, support, which means like a native open telemetry standard, and they're actually dropping their own protocols, like Jager protocols. So if you still use them, make sure you, you switch to the new OTLP with shiny new features. Um, and there is adaptive, they added adaptive sampling. So um, seems like you can control your sampling much more granularly and dynamically, which is which is super sweet because as you know, tracing can be expensive if you sample every event in your system. So making sure you make right decision is really important. And uh, yeah, flying graphs for traces, which is um, am amazing again. Um, like it's a specific kind of view that you could use actually for profiling as well. And um, yeah, the note of deprecation. Prometheus and open metrics, a reminder, a metric monitoring system, and I'm maintaining that. Um, and we are moving as well a lot. We are adding new service discoveries. So essentially like how you can integrate with the system you are using um, to, 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 to add your scrape jobs to really like control your uh, met, 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 monitoring metric pipeline. So we added new cloud providers, but actually Nomad as well, which is like super popular orchestration system alternative to Kubernetes. Um, additionally, we have a special long-term support uh, kind of version. It's kind of like very special. I think I was even surprised that this thing can, can exist. So, you know, we have a version every six uh, weeks and uh, some of them like we are trying to be you know compatible and so on but we decided to have one version being special and having this for longer so people can use it in more um, you know different systems that are not as dynamic as cloud native uh, you know cloud native um, you know communities for example like Kubernetes so uh, so having this LTS version is kind of super useful so we'll make sure it's stable make sure the security fixes and boxes are patches are there um, lots of optimizations and uh, kind of formatting for and pretty pretty printing for PromQL, which is super nice. You don't need to manually kind of format those in the UI. Um, and finally, out of order, what it means is that Prometheus were never capable of appending uh, old samples. So for example, you have um, a metric that you scrape and it is kind of from current time and you know you want to scrape you actually forgot to scrape you know let's say a period of two hours before that like if you would like to backfill that and append in some way via programmatic API or via remote write um, it, it will just fail with out of order um, error now Prometheus appends that it has some cost of course so be careful but um, it will just accept this if you configure Prometheus uh, properly Open telemetry, um, we like lots of lots of changes. It's a big project as well. Um, so you know, logging work, um, open metric and Prometheus compatibility work, uh, tracing general availability, um, telemetry logs uh, being improved. Um, there's client instrumentation. There are end working groups, so more groups as well. Um, metrics GA, which is kind of sweet. So kind of their metric protocol and SDKs are available. And uh, finally, they start working on profiling. So that's pretty, pretty sweet. So we can have like those four signals for now um, being supported by OpenTelemetry. And two more projects, Cortex, um, which um, kind of gets better scalability with, with, um, with new versions, uh, adding more maintainers and the uh, newest release have vertical query sharding. So kind of improvements on query layer. And, and some open telemetry support. Uh, or like, no, sorry, it's, a, it's just for tracing of Cortex itself, they support open telemetry, and then compaction is more scalable as well. And finally, last project I'm maintaining, I kind of co-funded this project as well, um, and we are moving as well with scalability. Uh, we have Ketama hash rink, we have ingestion rate limiting, so kind of like lots of performance fixes, and we are rewriting PromQL recently. So if you want to learn more, visit us in PromCon or maybe talks in this um, this this event. Um, so yeah, that's all from all from my side.
thank you very much and enjoy today's event.